What a great invitation. Holy Spirit, come. When you see the Jesus Revolution movie that we're going to see as a church, one of the keys of a move of God was them welcoming the Spirit of God. And when they said, Holy Spirit, come, we, we, we see people actually being touched by God's presence because the presence of the Holy Spirit is, the, is, is Jesus. It's the Spirit of Jesus. And today, what's so great, Jesus said this. This is what he said. He goes, I, I have to go so I could send my spirit. And I said, why, well, why do we have to go? This is the reason. Because Jesus, when he was here on earth, he could only be at one place at a time. So that means if you wanted a miracle or you wanted a healing or you wanted a breakthrough, you'd have to travel. And there'd be people, people traveling for miles to just get a touch of Jesus. But he said, when I send the Holy Spirit, you want me to leave because when I hit send the Holy Spirit, I'm going to be accessible everywhere at once. And that's why, that's why some of you have a, a story and your story is that you didn't meet, you didn't meet Jesus, maybe not even in a church. You, you met him somewhere else. There's people that are meeting Jesus while they're drinking a beer and the Holy Spirit hits them and said, what are you doing here? I'm, come on, I'm the one that wants it. I, come on, I'm the one that can make you whole. I'm the one that can make, make you free. Some of us were met in a pit, in a prison, in a, in a divorce, in a struggle. And thank God you didn't have to travel somewhere to get him. He was right there. And I, I'm letting you know this. God's presence is just a call away. Holy Spirit, come. And if you could wake up every morning and just welcome the Holy Spirit to your day and, and just say, Holy Spirit, lead me today. If you just said a simple prayer like that, journal that. I guarantee by the end of that day, you're going to see a day nothing like the other days you've lived because you welcome the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Say with me, Holy Spirit, come. Every day, let's welcome the Holy Spirit. Let's acknowledge Him. That's the Spirit of Jesus. It's the Spirit of God. And He's available. Isn't that great? I love it. You know what that means? I could talk to someone on the phone and I could pray with them. I don't need to touch them. Just pray with them and God touches them. Isn't that great? We're sending a team to Africa. The presence of God is already over there. I love it. And then, you know, as a believer, you know what's so great? The Holy Spirit's in you. Now that's really wild. God's presence is in you. And everywhere you go, you go, you go with the presence of God. I think we need to remember, come on. Jesus, come on. Jesus is an out. He's not out there. He's in you. His spirit is in you. And you know what that means? Healing's in you. Power's in you. Hope's in you. Freedom is in you. Come on. Overcoming power is in you. People are looking for hope. And I'll say this. Love is in you. And, I, and one of the greatest ways to, to show people God, don't argue with them. Prove to me there's a God. Well, the whole creation. How about that? I don't believe that, right? Okay, let's forget about that. But this is how the greatest way you could show God to somebody is this. Live a life full of love. The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love. And when they experience the unconditional love of Jesus, they'll experience it through you. The Bible says that he wants us to be rivers of living water. That means that we're not ponds, we're not lakes. They just get this and just become stinky, right? We just become stagnant. This is what we're supposed to do. Get it and then flow into somebody's life. Come on, someone needs a breakthrough today and they need it through you. And that's why God's put you in the mess that you're in. Stop complaining about the life you have. Stop complaining about the world that we're in and start being a light to this dark world. Someone needs hope today. Someone's suicidal. Come on, someone needs a breakthrough. Someone needs freedom. And you're going to bring it. Let's give the Lord one more hand. Holy Spirit, come. So good. We're going to talk about leadership for the next few moments. And, and we're going to be talking about leadership for probably two or three weeks more. 
I, I really want to talk to you about leadership because this world needs some leaders. And, and I, I see people every single day on the streets that are hurting, that are strung out on drugs. I see marriages that are on the rocks. I see a lot of people that are confused about their next step of life. A lot of broken hearts, depression, anxiety, fear. They're lost, separated from God, and they don't know how to fix their lives. What they need is someone to lead them out of their mess and lead them to a savior. And if we don't develop a leader, this leadership skill, someone say leadership skill. Now leadership skill will help you in every endeavor of your life. It'll help you in your business. It'll help you in your family. It'll help you be a, be a better father and mother. All, it'll help you in your careers. It'll help you, it'll help you in every endeavor. But the greatest way to use leadership is to influence, influence people for eternity. Someone say for eternity that I actually can influence someone to trust in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But I want you to get this. Usually they don't trust Jesus until they trust you. And that's crazy. Like people are saying, well, I haven't seen Jesus. I, I don't worry, is he at? And all you have to do is tell him, he's right here. Are you Jesus? Oh, I'm not Jesus, but he's in me. And you know when someone's full of the devil, they act like the devil. Have you ever met somebody who said, that person might be possessed? Some wives are saying, yeah, my husband, right? And, and the reason you think the person might be possessed is because they have, they have satanic attributes. Their anger is out of control. Their addiction is out of control. They're, they're super depressed and they're negative and they seem like they're in a cycle they can't break. And you say, man, there must be a demonic thing there. But it's the same thing when you're spiritual and you're being led by the God Spirit. This is what's going to happen. There's such thing as being filled with the Spirit of God that people start saying, man, that person must have God. Because there's no way that I would react ever like that. And the way they're reacting and the way they're loving me, it's unbelievable. And when they're sold on you, and I'm telling them, they, they know you love them and they trust you. This is what they'll let you do. They'll let you lead them. Man, I, I'm telling you right now, we got a whole world that needs some leadership. I, I see the pain in people's eyes. I see the struggle. And they don't need more crack. And they don't need more fentanyl. They don't need another person. And they don't need, they don't need another sexual experience. And they don't need, come on, they don't need more money. They need some peace. And they could only get this peace from the Lord. And if we're not, come on, if we don't win them over, we can't lead them to their breakthrough. Is there anybody want, here wants to lead people to some breakthroughs, to, to some freedom? We're not here to judge them. We're here to help them. Come on, give some praise. We're not here to judge them. We're here to help them. So let's talk about leadership for a moment. Father, we just thank you for this time that we had to study your word. Holy Spirit, come lead us. Direct us and teach us. You're our teacher. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just want to mention for a few moments what is leadership. And we start off this, the, the teaching on this definition. And it's the ability and skill to influence yourself, people, teams, organizations, to take the necessary actions to succeed. Um, when you're a leader and when you're an effective leader, you're leading first. The first person you lead, someone say yourself. Um, you have to be leadable first. And when I, when I say I'm leading myself, I would actually say this, that I'm being led by God's spirit, by his instructions, by his teaching. You'll never be a great leader if you cannot be led. So leadership is taught. Someone say, say it with me. Leadership is taught. That means if, if you want to become more influential, um, you want people to trust you, you can learn this. It's taught, but you can never be, you can never learn leadership if you're not teachable. Being in this room is very important because we're here to learn and get an impartation. If you want to become a leader, you want to become successful, you want to become an overcomer, you want to get a breakthrough, this idea, you have to be led to it. You have to be led through it. You have to be led to victory. We know this in teams. There's always coaching in businesses. We bring in great leaders to lead organizations to succeed or become profitable. And leadership is super important because without leadership, there's no success. Certainly without leadership, there's no. So this city will never turn around unless leadership turns around. Your family will not turn around unless you become a greater leader. I said this last week. Do, does does social media have more influence over your children than you do? 
Do, do their friends have more influence over their, your children than you do? do? Does the neighborhood drug dealer have more influence over your children than you do? If you're saying, I think they do, it's okay because we're going to learn leadership. And by the time we're done learning and practicing, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be able to win your family over, influence them out of, come on, out of the bad influences into following the greatest influencer, which is Jesus Christ. And they're going to experience freedom. Does anybody believe that we're talking about leadership because God's going to use you to help some people that are hurting to lead them out of their mess, to lead them, lead them out of their depression, to lead them out of their pain, to lead them out of their confusion? Leadership. It helps people to take necessary steps. Say it with me, necessary steps to succeed. Succeed. The word succeed means to achieve the desired result. It means to prosper, thrive, and grow. To make it, to overcome, to be victorious. The idea is when we become leaders, we help people grow. Someone say it with me. We help people what? When you're a great leader, the people under you or the people around you end up growing. They end up thriving, prospering, overcoming, making it, or succeeding. Most people nowadays are not succeeding. And they're not succeeding. One of the main reasons they're not succeeding is they don't even have a vision to succeed. They don't see a better day. Where are you going? Where are you headed? You can never be a great leader if you don't have some vision. You, see, God doesn't want you just surviving. He wants you to be a visionary. He wants you to see a better tomorrow. He wants you to see a victory. He wants you to see freedom. Come on. He wants to see reconciliation. He wants you to see a city turn around, a family turn around, your children turn around, your marriage turned around. And what God is saying, if I could get you to see it, that's the beginning of succeeding. And a big part of a leader is seeing what other people don't see and helping them see it and then helping them get to it. Helping them make it. And as we influence, come on, as we, uh, as we expose ourselves to the Word of God today, as we expose ourselves to thoughts today that are bigger than us, you know what's going to happen? We're going to start seeing more than we've been seeing. We're going to start experiencing greater victories, greater breakthroughs. We're going to start seeing growth. And when you start seeing growth, this is what's happening. It's happening because you are a leader. Someone say a leader. There's no leaders. There's no growth without leadership. So it's the ability to help people take necessary steps to succeed. Now the question is, how do we begin to develop influence. How do we begin to develop influence? Influence is trust. Trust. That means that no one will follow you if they don't trust you. No one will follow you if they don't what? Trust you. They don't believe in you. So we could build, we could build trust. There's things that people have done to you that have destroyed trust with them. Can they rebuild it? Yes, they can rebuild it. Remember, trust is not a right. Trust is earned. How many get that? So we can le learn how to build trust. There's things I could do to build trust. But we're going to be talking about how do I build influence so I can lead some people. The first step I want to cover today is find and follow an influential and successful leader. If you find a successful leader in whatever endeavor that you're in, the best thing you can do is learn and model your thoughts and behavior after that leader. Figure out what they do and start doing it. Figure out what they do and you don't have to figure it out. Just follow someone that's already doing it. This is how you get impartations of leadership. You'll never get impartation of leadership if you act like a know-it-all. The only thing you know is what you know. And if you stay in the place of knowing what you know, you're going to keep on getting the same results that you have today. There has to be a time in your life that say, I know some stuff, but I don't know this stuff that I'm struggling with. So I need some mentoring 
And it's okay to, it's okay to humble yourself and look at someone that's succeeding in an area that you desire to succeed and say, look, can you help me think like you? I want to know what your secrets of success are so I could begin to do it myself. How many believe that? Come on. Leadership. Leadership is taught. Leadership is trained. Well, how do we know this? I'm going to read a scripture real quick. And it's, it's Jesus in Matthew 4, 19. And look, Jesus taught. So say it with me. Jesus taught and Jesus trained. He trained his people to be like him. He trained his people to be like who? He didn't say, I'm going to train you to be you. I'm going to train you to be like me. Because I don't want you to get your results. I want you to get my results. If you start, I want you to get this. If you start thinking like Jesus, talking like Jesus, living like Jesus, this way, you're going to start seeing, you're going to start seeing the results of Jesus. Come on. The peace of Jesus, the victory of Jesus, the healing power of Jesus. All we need to do is be better followers. But look at this. In Matthew 4, 19, it says, Jesus called out to them. Come, follow me. What is this called? Leadership. What is Jesus saying? Come, follow me. What we see in Scripture around this time, this time when he talked to his, he's calling his 12 disciples to follow him, his 12 inner circle disciples. There wasn't one of them that said no. Every single one of his 12 disciples that he said, follow me, they immediately dropped everything to follow him. And you start thinking, well, why would they follow him? And I'll tell you why they followed him. Because Jesus, before he called them, already had a reputation. They already knew he's a rabbi, he's a teacher, and Jesus already somehow had a reputation in his neighborhood of being different than any other teacher that was there. And Jesus had no followers at this time. Because to be a follower, this would have to happen. You'd have to be called to follow him. It was a privilege to be a student of a rabbi. Back in the Jewish days, the highest call a young man could have was to become a rabbi. It was to become a teacher of the word. It was higher than any call. It was higher than a call of a king. It was higher than a call of a politician. It was higher than a call of a businessman. And that's why when, when Jesus came, for instance, to Peter, and he says, come follow me, he left his fishing nets behind. He left his lucrative business behind. He says, you want me to follow you? The, um, you, you are the greatest rabbi we've ever heard teach. Definitely I'll drop everything and follow you. That's called leadership and influence. That's called what? And every one of the 12 did the same thing. They followed him because of his reputation. Say it with me, reputation. And you know what's so great? I don't matter how much you've messed up, you can turn it around. And if you've messed up a whole bunch, you just get a bigger success story. And no matter how bad things have become, I'm letting you know Jesus did not come for a whole bunch of self-righteous, perfect, goody two-shoes. He came for some people, come on, that had a messed up past. Everybody overlooked you and everybody overlooked Peter. But there was a day where Jesus says, I know everybody looked over you and nobody wants you as their student. But I choose you and I'm going to get some great glory out of this. And I want you to follow me because I'm going to show you how to be like like me and I'm gonna this is what's gonna happen we're gonna blow their minds see God is ready to use your catastrophes your messes your failures come on your poverty your met all your mess ups and he said don't worry about it you are following the devil now you can follow me and I'll turn your life around we're just a decision of following the greatest leader away from being a great leader It's a choice. So he says, come, follow me. Now, if Jesus was here, like physically, he says, you, come follow me. But you're like, me? <laughs> now that we know his story, like, for sure. Would there be someone maybe here that says, I don't know. And you miss your opportunity? Because I'll tell you this. 
You'll never be a great leader until you're following a great leader. I, I said this before. I remember when I was in the car business, I wanted to succeed. Does anybody want to succeed? My, do you have a vision of succeeding? You know what success is? The accomplishment of a goal. What is success? That means you have a vision. I'm here, but I want to go there. And I believe that's my destiny. I want to do more. I want to grow. I want to, I want to see increase in my life. I want to be more effective. I want to be holy. I want to be separated. I want to be free. I want to be happy. I want healthy relationships. I'm tired of being in this cycle. That's called a vision. And you know what the devil's job is? Is to make you think nothing good is ever going to happen to you. It's called hopelessness. Now, it, it, and he'll even convince you it's for them, but not for you. But there's, come on, there's a leader that says, I'm calling you. And it's not, come on, it's not, it's not just for them. It's for you too. Come on, the breakthrough's for you. Heaven's for you. Love is for you. Healthy relationships are for you. Eternal life is for you. Freedom is for you. Come on, it's, say it say with me. It's mine. And he says this, this is how you're going to get it. Come follow me. Say it with me. Follow him. Okay. So when I was in the car business, I wanted to be the, I wanted to, if I was going to be at work, away from my wife and my kids, I wanted to make the most amount of money I could. Why not? So I figured that if I'm going to make the most money I can, I need to sell more cars than everybody else. Why not? See, some of, some of us right now, I'm, we're not talking about ambition. We're talking about you being your best. And you need to get a bigger vision. It's not, well, I'm okay, just surviving. Stop being okay surviving because this is a problem. When you're just surviving, you can't be an ultimate blessing. You guys understand that? So, so, so I was looking at, uh, I was look, I, I went in my first day and I'm looking at the board and they have a board with all the salespeople. And then they had a guy with a whole bunch of stars by his name. And I go, who's that? With all those stars, I, I was in sports, like a stars is something. And when I was a little kid and to put stars, stars have to be some good. And this is what they told me. He's a top salesman. He was a top salesman last month. I go, really? And this is what I said. I want to be a top salesman. It was my first day. I go, who is he? And this is what I did. They pointed him out to me. Big guy, six foot two. I went up to him. I didn't say nothing to him. I looked at him. I saw he had a white paper in his pocket. I went and got a white paper, put it in my pocket. I didn't know what that white paper was for. It didn't matter. If he was a top salesman, I'm sure that paper means something. You know, some of you guys are too smart to start being a good leader. You're trying to reinvent stuff. And you know what this is? This is supposed to be an inheritance. We're supposed to be giving it from one generation to the next generation. And this is what's happening with America. All the leaders, come on. We've lost our leaders and every generation starting over every single year. And God is saying, I'm going to break that cycle now in the name of Jesus. You're going to get it. You're going to learn how to be a leader and you're going to pass it on. I followed that guy for 30 days. Everything he did, I did. He go to the bathroom, I'm like, we go to the bathroom right now, this is our break time? <laughs> he goes, why are you following me? Because I want to be like you. They say you're the top salesman. I'm away from my family. I'm going to make this time count. I'm not here to waste time. I'm here to learn a skill. I'm here to get real good at this because I want to bring home a blessing to my family, a blessing to my church, a blessing to my children. And if you're the one that knows how to do it, I'm going to follow you. Well, it didn't take me long following him. I wasn't following the guys that were kicking back and talking about girls all day long and saying dirty jokes. <laughs> you know what we're talking about? Some of you guys go home with a dirty joke, but you don't go home with a paycheck. 
You go home with a dirty joke, but you don't go home, come on, with some skill. You go home with a dirty joke, come on, you go home with a dirty mind, but you don't go out of there, wait, come on, you didn't grow that day. And God is saying, come on, that has to end right now. I've called you to grow, and if you can grow, you can help some people grow. There was a day, it was like six months later, there was stars by my name. And now this would happen. Not only were there stars on my name, there was now some respect on my name. So now new people started coming in. See, I was just not leading them now to the top, to the top of the board. I was leading them now to my Lord and Savior. And they started asking me, how'd you do that at a young man? Hey, well, I just started learning some wisdom. And let me tell you my source of wisdom, my source of breakthrough. Come on, it's time for you to get it. Time for you to grow so you can show someone else. Someone say, learn it so you can teach it. Come follow me. You know, you should be able to say that. I don't want nobody following me. Well, if they don't follow you, they can't get to Jesus. I, well, I, stop trying to be so spiritual that you don't want responsibility. I don't want nobody looking at me. I'm not the example. Yes, you are. Do you think God filled you with his spirit so you could stay lazy? Come on, you can stay in your mess. You can stay bound. You can stay in your destructive cycles. Come on, I filled you with my spirit so you could be like me. You should, come on, somebody right now, God is saying, come on, I filled you with my spirit so you can start doing some supernatural things that are beyond your ability. Well, Pastor, you don't know I'm bipolar. Told you that. They diagnosed me by four four psychiatrists. Now you could keep that identity all day long, and I'm not gonna get into that. All I'm saying is there's a greater identity you could say, you know how you you could finally say if you want it, come on, if you want a victory, you can want this and say, Jesus, if your word says who the sun sets free is free indeed. I want some of that freedom in my life. If your word says the joy of the Lord is my strength, I want some of that joy in my life. Come on, if your word says that the fruit of the spirit is self-control, come on, and it's joy and his peace and his love. I want some of that. There's a time you got to say, that's who I used to be. But I'm telling you, right now I'm going somewhere that I've never been. I'm going to break this curse and I'm going to be a curse breaker. I don't know why I'm preaching so crazy tonight. I think I'm overcoming some, some thoughts that are trying to stop you, come on, from succeeding, from becoming wealthy so you can bless somebody, from becoming free and joyful. Come on, God wants you to get it so you can give it. Amen. Come follow me. There's some of you right now that you need to get there. You know why you're struggling in your sin? Your vision is too small. Your vision is, I just hope I don't get high this week. I got a sex addiction, I can't stop it. I just hope I don't fall into a bedroom this week. How'd I get here? I'm not dogging you, I'm just telling you, your vision is way too small. You gotta get to the point that you're so free and you're, you're, you've conquered this thing and you got the devil underneath your feet. You got that situation, come on. You got some authority over that thing. I'm not struggling with that thing anymore. I've been set free. Now I can tell somebody, follow me. I'll pull you out of that addiction. I'll pull you out of that shame. I'll pull you out of that bondage. I'll pull you out. Come follow me. I know we're talking about Jesus. But there's such a thing that you become so like Jesus, you could say something like this, follow me as I follow Christ. And, someone say and. and. 
This is Matthew 4, 19. I will show you. So you follow me. And understand, these are first disciples. Follow me, and I'll show you. I'll show you how. I'm going to train you. We're going somewhere. You have a purpose. I'm going to show you how to do what I do. I'm going to train you in the family business. And the family business is people. The greatest skill you could ever get is people skills. I'm going to show you what? How? Show you what? Show you what? That's called training. That's called development. If, uh, this is the idea. As a leader, you should be showing people how to. Because they don't know how to. What a leader does, he finds a way to get it done to help people find a way to get it done. You want to divorce your wife, God says, nah, that's your school. Stop dropping out of your school. You want it easy. I didn't give you an easy wife. I'm taking you places. I want you to get a doctorate in relationships. Stop being a, come on, stop being a Christian dropout. Finish your training. Count of joy when you fall into diverse trials and tribulations. What he's saying, when you're going through a tough time, get happy about it. Because this is grow time. So I say, this is grow time. This is graduation time. This is school time. You got to learn something in that trial. Overcome it so you can learn from the Holy Spirit so you can help someone else. You cannot help someone if you don't go turn your test into a testimony. I want to leave. I want to quit. It's too hard. <laughs> See, that's, not, that's why there's not too many doctors out there. Doctors get paid, but nobody wants to go to the schooling to become a doctor. See, some of you guys want the pay of a doctor, but you don't want to go through, through the trials and processes, come on, and the tests of a doctor. All God is saying, I'm training you to do some big, some big stuff right now. And I know it's not going according to plan, and it looks like you're behind schedule. But God says you're not behind schedule. You're in school. And all I need you to do is learn. If anybody lacks wisdom, let them ask, and I'll give it to you in the middle of your trial, in the middle of difficulty. And if you don't give up, you'll be perfected. If you don't give up, you'll be mature. If you don't give up, you're going to be ready for every single assignment I have for you. Man, oh man. We're on point number none. I haven't even started yet. <laughs> Say we're going to fish for people. Fish for what? People. Fish for what? People. So I'm going to show you how to reach people. You follow me. I'm here to seek and save lost people. People that have sinned, ruined their lives, are hopeless, confused, lost for eternity. I'm going to reach them with my love, with my power, with my teachings, with my wisdom, with my touch. I'm going to show you how to do that. And when I show you how to do that, you're going to know how to reach people. And when you know how to reach people, there's no limits on you anymore. Because once you learn leadership skill, everywhere you go, there's a demand on your skill. I learned it in a church. The greatest leaders in the world are volunteer leaders. People follow because they want to, not for a paycheck. God wants you to learn some leadership skill. That people follow you, not because you're paying them. They, um, it's okay, but they follow you when you. Well, they follow you because they love you. They believe in you. They believe you love them. They're getting better. They are growing, and they're saying, "How can I not follow you? I'm better every day. I hang around you." And God is saying, "I'm preparing you to be a leader in this world." Fish for some people. We're going to Kenya fishing. Come on, we're going to Kenya in the schools fishing. Come on, we're going to the streets pulling prostitutes off the streets. We're going fishing. 
Come on, we're going to Compton. We're going fishing in the hood. We're fishing. And once you get good at this, and you become a good fisherman. I went, I went to go fishing with a guy that's like a professional fisherman. And he just got me so mad. I'm serious. I don't even, I think he's cheating. I don't know what was happening. He gives me the same bait, same area. And he just puts his line in there. And before you know it, he gets pulling the fish out. He looks at me, you got anything? Yeah, I go, No. I spent five hours with him on the lake. He was pulling fish out of there like there was just like, I mean, it was just like, I don't even know what it was like. It was just, there was just like a candy with a baby. I don't even know what it was. And by the time I was done, I didn't catch one fish. The only joy I got, he hooked one. He said, okay, reel it in. Okay. Let's take a picture. I, I took that picture, showed it to Lisa. I didn't tell her that he did it. How many will know how to reach some people? Come on. There's somebody right now. He's saying, it's time to start thinking bigger. I want to show you how to fish for people. I want to show you. Come on, how to reach your family. I want to show you how to reach your kids. I want to, I want to make you a person of impact. That everywhere you go, people begin to hear what you're saying. And they get pulled out of their depression. They get pulled out of their addiction. They get pulled out of their past. They get pulled out of their despair. Because you learn how to fish. Man. Okay, point number one. That's good. <laughs> We're done. I, I, I tell you this. Okay, this is what we learned. <laughs> <laughs> to be a great leader, you got to follow a great leader. And the greatest leader in the history of the world, the champion, come on, the undisputed champion of the world, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the creator of the universe, come on, the one that split time in half, come on, it's 2023 because something happened in 20, come on, in year one, and that was Jesus, the greatest influencer on earth came, and he says, come on people, follow me, and I'll show you how to live a life of purpose, and until you start reaching people, you're going to be empty because you were created to reach people. You were not created to just come to church. You were not created, come on, to be spirit, just spiritual. And you were created not to be religious, but you were created to go out there and reach somebody for Jesus. Okay. Point number one. To be a great leader, you got to follow a great leader. Point number two. To be a great leader, you got to be trained to be a great leader. You want to be successful in anything, and it's across the board. It could be a career. They don't even have to be Christians. But if you can find someone that has a skill that you need, it's time to get educated. Get that skill. Master it. So you could be an ultimate blessing and bless some people. And as you begin to learn how to do things, this is what's going to happen. You're going to gain influence because people want to learn how to do it. And there's some things that you're struggling with today. Point number three. I just making it up right now. <laughs> Point number three. There's stuff you're struggling today. It's not time to give up in your test. But what you need is endurance. And if you endure through this test and you keep showing up to, come on, showing up to class, showing up to school, showing up to church, come on, learning, showing up to classes. Whatever area you're being tested in, tested in, is the area you're getting ready to get breakthrough in. Before breakthrough and victory comes testing. So I'll be, I'm being tested in the area. If it's financial, get ready for a financial breakthrough. If it's relational, get ready for a relational breakthrough. Come on. If it's sickness, get ready for, come on, a, a, a healing breakthrough. Whatever the area is, the area of your testing is the area of your next blessing. But you're not just going to only get it because you're going to learn how to do it. You're going to learn through the word of God. 
God's going to show you. And when he shows you, you're going to do it. And then this is what's going to happen. For the rest of your life, you're going to help people and show people what you've learned. And, learn, and, and come on, and lead them to the greatest leader in the world. His name is Jesus Christ. Come on, come on. You can do it all through Christ. Awesome, Christian. Please close us out. Let's all stand up. Come on, come on. Give God praise if you receive that word tonight. There's no greater leader that we can follow than the greatest leader that has ever touched down on this earth. Before anyone else leaves, I want to kindly ask that we're real sensitive to this moment. Because this entire night, I believe that God has been speaking to you tonight. And there's one message that I believe God wants everyone in here to understand. Jesus is saying this, come follow me. Follow me. I'll give you hope. I'll give you forgiveness of your sins. I'll give you a brand new life. Just come follow me. And right now he's tugging on some hearts. I want to share with you very briefly about what the Bible calls the good news. It's called good news because, well, it starts off as bad news. The bad news is this, that we've all fallen short of God's standard, which means we've sinned. We've messed up. And because of our sin, the price has an eternal price tag on it. The Bible says the wages of our sin is death, which means that because we sin, we owe a price tag of eternal separation from God forever. We cannot be in the presence of God in heaven, going to the gates with sin on our lives. Even one sin. And even one sin cannot be paid for by being a good person. That means that I can't try and be good and do a lot of good things to try and earn my way to heaven. I can't do it. It's impossible. So then where's the hope? Well, here's the hope. Here's the good news. That God loves you so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for your sins so that you wouldn't have to. In other words, Jesus came into this world while you were still in your sinful state to pay a price he didn't deserve, but that you and I deserved. So that you can now inherit his righteousness, his forgiveness, and his life. It's the greatest exchange that we can ever walk in. Jesus is saying, give me your old life. Give me your sin. Give me your addiction and your bondage. And I will in turn give you my righteousness, my perfection, my forgiveness, my hope, my eternal life. It does, sometimes it doesn't even make sense. So how can I be saved? How can I inherit that eternal life? How can I come to follow Jesus? Well, here's how. You don't try and leave and fix your life and come back. That's like trying to tell the doctor, I'll be back, I'll cure my cancer, my disease, and then I'll come back and see you in the hospital. It doesn't work that way. Jesus wants you to come exactly how you are. Come right now and put your faith in Jesus and repent of your sins. That means to change your mind, to turn around from the way you've been living and turn right now to Jesus. If right now you're saying, I want to follow Jesus, I want to be forgiven of my sin, and I want the free gift of eternal life, knowing that if I were to die tonight, I would go to heaven, not hell. I would be in heaven with God forever. If that's you, you're saying, I want that, and I want to put my faith in Jesus. I want to repent. I want to turn from my old ways. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand all over this room, and even online, I want you to raise your hand tonight. You're saying, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. One, two, three hands up all over the room all over the room i see your hand i see those three hands that's four that's five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen anybody else over here i just missed on this keep your hand up keep your hand up you're saying that's me 14 i see your hand anybody else on this side anybody else you're saying that's me i want to give my life to jesus we're proud of you can you do me a favor for all those that just raised your hand tonight do me one more fa favor. Take one more bold step. Would you leave your seat and just come forward? 
because we want to pray with you and we want to congratulate you. And church, why don't we clap for all those that have raised their hands tonight? Why don't we clap for all those that are making a decision to follow Jesus? Come forward. Even if you're in the last row, I want you to come forward tonight. We're going to pray with you. We're going to help you grow. We're going to help you take your next step.